Ladies, leave your man at home. The club is full of ballers and their pockets full grown. And all your fellas, leave your girl with your friends. Cause it's 1130 and the club is jumping, jumping. What up, what up, what up? Positive vibes may be PVM talk show. Once again, we are here the evening of Wednesday at 7 p.m. So you know what time it is. Jetty A track. My brother, Dash, Dante Smith. Gonna be up in here. We gonna talk our shit. And I only saying that because I just seen this meme. Somebody was saying some fly shit. It was like, yo, where the club Beyonce was talking about that the, the ball is in there and the pockets full grown and shit. It just reminded me of that record. That record flies a motherfucker. But it also kind of ties in with what we're going to be talking about this evening. We're going to be talking about how men be knowing as far as men's intuition, as far as how men be picking up on certain things, as far as on the cheating type time or just picking up on certain things as it comes, you know what I mean, ties in as far as energy and a relationship with a woman and whatnot and just picking up on certain things. And we also going to investigate why niggas don't be up on their shit when it comes to, you know, what they women be doing as opposed to women being up on their shit as far as what they man be doing. We're going we're gonna to talk about a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get into it. But before we do, how you living? How you feeling? We're going to send these invitations out. L Dove, what's going on with you, love? The Groove. It's been a while since we've seen that account, man. What's going on with your family? I know you're still active, bruh. And I know because I know something y'all don't know. High five, bitch. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's been a smooth day, though. I can't complain. God is good. You know what I mean? Ah, it's going to be a real, real long one for me tomorrow. I might have to pull in the overtime shift, but you know what I'm saying? At least I got a shift to pull overtime towards, you know what I mean? So, well, I look like complaining, you know what I mean? Shout out to Neat Sky, shout out to the fam, you know what I mean? Shout out to High Five. Y'all know who y'all are, you know what I mean? And I'm going to also put in the, the topic, men... Be knowing what a brain, what a brain emoji I is. <laughs> You're gonna have some fun with this, though. You see what I'm saying? So, I'm going to let Dash, when he gets in here, explain further and delineate why we're talking about this today. It's actually a pretty interesting concept, you know what I'm saying? Um, to be quite honest, I don't know if I've ever been cheated on personally, you know what I mean? That's not an egotistical like statement, honestly. I haven't been in as many relationships as one would need to be in for cheating to be a thing, per se. And it's not to say that you need to be in several relationships for you to be cheated on. It's just that I've been in more situationships than actual relationships. So as far as relationships are concerned... I could probably count on one hand how many like official relationships I've been in and not even like use all my fingers, you know what I'm saying? Uh let's see, uno, dos. And I'm talking about like throughout the whole course of my life and shit. I'm talking about from like grade school up and shit, you know what I'm saying? And grade school don't really count, you know what I mean? That that's <laughs> We gonna get into a lot of shit. This shit gonna be funny. Hold on. Uno, dos. Tres. And I'm counting tres as in where I'm at right now. Tres. Do I got cuatro? Do I got cuatro? I was in a relationship for one on one week one time. That was hilarious. I was that was years ago. I guess that could be cuatro. That's like a demo. That's not cuatro. That's a demo. That's a demo. We're not gonna count we not gonna we don't count that as cuatro. We count that as demo. You know what I'm saying? Dash, what's going on with you, fam? L Dove said, why not? All right, fuck it. Cuatro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's bring Dash up in here so we can prove in the shaking and baking how we usually do. Yeti! Yeah, set it up right here. Somebody playing the Drizzy Hall. Hall. What's up? What's up with you playing? <laughs> how you living? I'm chilling. <laughs> living man uh i'm okay i'm okay it's been a long day but i'm here right on i seen your stories man what happened to your whip uh 
that's 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 why today was a long day. That was why today was a long day. Um, man, I hate small animals. Um, a little thing ran out on me in the middle of while I was taking off on three or nine. Little small little little guy jumped in front of me while I was taking off. I ran over the little guy. You know, I don't know how, but I guess he somehow slid up under my um, alternator and, you know, got my shit leaking. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm back on the road tomorrow. But, um, you know, like, I ain't even going to stress it right now, you know. Uh, <laughs> I took a loss a few hundreds, but, you know. Right. As they always say, real ones bounce back. So I'll bounce back, you know. It's just, you know, minor setback for a major comeback, hopefully, you know. Uh, Not even hopefully, it will be. You know, I ain't going to let this defeat me, you know. Right. That's a major, right. you know what I'm saying? The bigger blessing is that, you know what I mean, you weren't harmed in the process. Of course, little, little guy had to go, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, little guy had to go, you know. Like I just seen his eyes open up wide as I as I as I took him out, you know, and I was just like, yeah, you know, like I don't know why he was out on the road this this early in the morning. This ah, look, your owners didn't love you enough. Like, oh wait, this motherfucker had a collar on him. Oh, I don't know, cause like it was so dark. All I seen was the eyes at the end when I smacked it. You know, like I'm not even sure it was a dog. I'm just assuming it was a dog. Yeah. You know? Sheesh. But but little thing little little thing that ran me up to five hundred dollars so far, so but <laughs> it's a little little expensive critter, you know. But it is what it is. It is what it is. You I know. You. That's why you fund, man. At emergency fund that rainy day fund, man. I know. I was about to play with that rainy fund though. Like, I ain't even gonna hold you. I had plans to, to play around with that thing, but it is what it is. Like, <laughs> you know how the old saying is when we make plans, that's when God laughed at us. So, like, for sure, for sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But, um, let's get into it though. You know what I mean? I was talking to the people and just letting them know that, you know what I mean? This is an interesting concept, and, and I might have talked around this, but I'm not too sure if we actually talk directly to it. So, I don't as, think so. Then, what's up? I said I don't think so either. Like I think we, uh, I think it's always been like we handed around it or like briefly like got onto it, but never that boosted the whole episode to it. Word word. Well, as you as you're the one that put us on to this topic, you know what I'm saying. Like, let us know. Let us know what 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 inspired what inspired you to to share it with us. You know what I'm saying? And, and and how do you how do you feel about it? What's your take on it? Well, like a, a couple things jumped out to me uh, when I was like watching the video because um, for those who don't know, today's episode is based off a promo clip that we used for the uh, highlight, and then it um, the guy he was talking about intuition when you're in a relationship and you're dating and you feel like your partner is creeping behind your back, you know, and that intuition you pick up. And he was going on, what really stood out to me was where he uh, said, women aren't the only ones that have int intuition, men do too. And that that initially, you know, uh, raised my eyebrows because I was just like, huh. Because um, in past relationships and in a lot of them, I've always had like intuition, whether good or bad, you know, with my mate, you know, I developed that. And in a few situations where my mate has stepped out on me or cheated on me, you know, like I always felt like a change in things. And each time I can always remember myself just kind of like fighting that, fighting that feeling, but also knowing something is different, you know, whether it's just like the smallest things. And then I loved how he got into like, it's not even like, major things, but it's like small things. Like if you aren't paying attention as a man, you won't really pick up. Like, but if you really in tune with what your woman, you know, like you're going to slowly pick up and like certain things, like when he mentioned, like the way they start acting differently when they're messing with someone, like and how they start talking differently. Like even like the, the slang that they use is different. 
I was just like, yo, this is so true because in each instance that I have been cheated, I've always noticed those things. But I always thought that was a personal me thing. I didn't realize that was a a man thing. Like other guys were, you know, going through life, experiencing the same feeling. And this 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 isn't something like a lot of guys we have conversations about. Like, so it's not like you about to run to your boys and be like, yo, let me tell you about how Shorty was cheating on me and this is how I was feeling. So it's not like a conversation we have amongst each other to be like, oh, okay, like to pick up the vibe. So for me, I just honestly thought this was something personal, like I was picking up, you know, like, that was initially special for me. So when I heard him talking about the same things I've been dealing with and, you know, like even like his whole mental process through it, I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, we kind of got to bring this to a broader spectrum, you know, and that was for me. That was, that was really what stood out for me because like that's not even like a gender thing. Like I think that's more of a relationship or a partner thing. Like whether you man or female, if you really in tune with your partner, you're going to start to pick up like the little things, like the, the smallest of things, like the slightest of changes. And like, I even had this, I even had one of my partners uh, mention it before. And like, I, and I, and, and that's why, that's, that's the second reason why this video stood out to me because like, even when that partner, she started creeping out on me, she was just like, immediately when I started creeping out, you picked up on this. And I was just like, oh, okay. And when he said something, I forgot exactly what he said, but when he said, I think it was more so lines like, like even like her her body changed, like or the like the way she would move, like. But I know, like for me personally, like it could be something as small as that, like even the way you position yourself and you just carry yourself could throw me to the point of be like, oh, okay, something different with you, you know. Like if I'm in tune with you at that time, you know. So, like, give me your give me your point of view or what you how you felt about it, you know, where you said where they if I sent it to you. Uh, I, got you. I, I agree. I agree with a good with a good portion of it. You know what I mean? It's a fine line between it's a fine line between paranoia and intuition, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you're right, and I, I'm glad you said that because a lot of times I did thought. I did think, you know, like um, I was being paranoid and I was projecting negative thoughts into the relationship. And that was like be my main reason being like, you know what? I don't I don't even got no evidence. This is just a feeling. So I'm not even going to take it there, you know, like and try to get a benefit of the doubt to your partner. But, you know, in those situations, I always was wrong for not trusting my gut, you know. I feel like that's something that um, that's something that I don't know if women do this. And for the women who are in the chat right now, shout out to Miss Davis. How you doing, love? Orisha Goddess, how you doing, love? For the women that are in the chat right now, for the women that are watching this, you know I mean, let us know where 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 we defer as far as um, we both got into and we both employ our into differently. You know what I mean? Ash said, he said um, sometimes he, you know what I mean, he needs more evidence before he can assert. You know what I mean? I know that for a fact. That's 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 something I went through. Like past relationship before, I can't call it cheating, but you know what I mean. She was doing whatever she was doing because it was an experimental, thing, mutually agreed upon. It was mutually understood and agreed upon as far as it being like an open relationship. You know what I mean? It was my first foray into it. And it was a fucking nightmare, but that's not the point. So um, I I I realized that something was going on because there's something that what you said. You know what I mean? It says it says a lot to a truth and a reality as far as what women can't really fake the funk on. And if a woman does fake the funk on, she's likely a sociopath because women are they are they are really really super in tune with being um, water like. You know what I mean? And when I say water like, they they absorb and then they refract. They they, they like light water. They absorb and they they refract. You know what I'm saying? So um, a woman. A woman definitely be on some type of time where it's like if it don't really resonate with them, they're not gonna really fake the funk about how it's resonating. You know what I mean? Because you're not you're not adding to their peace, you're not adding to yeah. their spirit or whatnot. So it, it goes to what that that visual said as far as like Oh, uh, it wasn't even a man that said it. The woman actually said it. She said that she heard many women say, you know what I mean, when I'm cheating on my man or when I'm stepping out, da da da, da like the man that I'm with. 
he starts doing certain things and I start getting nitpicky about it. Like, I, it starts annoying me and shit. It's just That's like, tolerable, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my situation with um with old girl from Once Upon a Time and shit, I remember it was just certain things. Like, there was one time I was doing her hair or whatnot, and I remember, like, she used to like me taking my time and talking to her hair as I was doing it. You know what I'm saying? She had locks at the time. I don't know if she still got it or not. I don't know. But she had locks at the time. And when she was, like, doing whatever she was doing with old buddy, you know what I mean? I was, like, you know what I mean? Taking my time with the lock. She was, like, ah, don't do that. Hurry up. And I was, like, I felt bad because I was, like, oh, shit. You know, maybe I'm playing around too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, you right. But the one thing about me, though, is I, I'm just like you on that type of time. I document everything. Because when we broke up, I let all the shit out just to let her know. Motherfucker, you ain't like I <laughs> single fucking thing. I let shit go for the benefit of the doubt because I was walking in situations eyes wide the fuck shut. You heard me? But I let her know this, 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 this. These are the things because I felt that shit. There was a situation, another situation. I remember telling her it was just me and her talking and shit. And I was letting her know one of my first instances of me taking the K2 trip and shit, you know what I mean? And I was, mind was melting, and I was like, all right, I had to conceptualize my sanity in a certain type of way for me to be able to come back from that K2 trip and not really be all the way to fuck local and shit. She wasn't even interested at all, you know what I'm saying? It hurt me. I ain't gonna hold you. I was hurt about the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When we ended up, like, probably like a couple months afterwards you know what i mean we we end up linking up with the old boy she was fucking and shit and i ain't know at the time but you know what i mean once again Wait, I end up I'm with him? In situation i'm in a poly situation and shit so it was just like <laughs> whatever you know what i'm saying eyes wide shut once again so i told the same story in front of all the motherfuckers and when i did she was just like really wow hmm and I was like, what the fuck? Like, back of my head, I'm like, bitch, like, I told you this shit like a couple months ago. Like, you looked at me like I was a dummy. Now with this motherfucker and this shit is like fucking gold and silver to you. But once again, eyes wide shut. <laughs> okay, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I eat that. But one thing I will say, and I will speak on my behalf, and I feel like men could resonate with this, but I speak on my behalf mostly regarding this is, you know what I mean? Sometimes we don't lean on our intuition too much when it comes to our women because we want to believe. You know what I mean? And that might be ego, but we want to believe that we're the only ones in their life. So no, that's a lot of truth. Red flags. We'll see red flags dead on. <laughs> like, nah. Couldn't be. Nah. And that's where I feel like we get the bad rap as far as niggas being dumb and shit. Because we don't lean on our intuition when it comes to our women like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mostly. I'm not going to say all of us. Nah, I, I say a large portion of it because, like, I, it, it might be ego. It might be ego. like, And it might be just wanting the best. Like, wanting to project the best for yourself or hoping for the best. Like, because, honestly, um... Most times they're not like if you more times than not, guys, we typically don't even really want to be in a relationship. So if you're in a relationship, you are already kind of invested in this woman more than you typically would be invested in most women. So like at that point, you do want to have the faith and believe that, you know, whatever y'all going through, she not stepping out on you. You know, like you want to believe like not my woman, my woman going to be thorough enough to be like, you know what, we can be going through whatever shit we're going through, we're going to work this out, I ain't going to creep, you know, I'll do you the justice at least, you know, ending things, like, but, like, I, I think that's where it, it roots from, and then, like, also, like, ego plays a factor into it, like, the, nah, she, she damn sure ain't going to cheat on me, because, like, I know, I, I'm a victim of it as well, you know, like, where I'm just like, nah, like, shorty can't, shorty, shorty ain't gonna find nothing better. Like, I, I remember saying that before, like, being like, nah, I'm that dude. Like, like she can't find nothing better than this. Like, and feeling so confident. And shorty was, she was having her cake and eating it too, you know. And I was, like how you said, playing dumb, dumb the fool. Like, so that dude play a lot of, a lot into it.
I want to ask you something. Do you think uh, monogamy is dead at this point? You know, like, or are we all destined for poly relationships? You said, do I think what? I didn't hear that first part. Monogamy is dead. Monogamy is dated? Nah. Mm. It's only as dated as you allow. Or it's dying. I should say. I don't think it's dead yet, but I think it's on its way to dying, you know? And I, yeah, it's dying as you allow it to be, bro. Because at the end of the day, you can only sustain one type of relationship if you're going to keep it all the way funky. You can't sustain a monogamous and a poly relationship. That shit don't make no fucking sense. You know what I mean? you either one or the other. So it, it depends on what side of the fence you're on. And I know there's other types of relationships as far as intimacy with with romantic partners or a romantic and intimate partner is concerned, but you can only play one side of the fence. So whatever side of the fence that you play, you rocking with that team. And that team can't be dying if you waving the flag for it. So it's only as dying as much as it is for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like who's keeping score? Like, I don't, I'll put it like this. I don't need the rest of the world to be rocking on monogamy if monogamy works for me and mine's. Because it works for me and mine. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't really care about the scoreboards and the tally about who who says what about monogamy. Because it's not meant for them. It's meant for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, you got a good point. You know, like you got a good point. You know, like you can keep on traveling until you find that one person that's good for monogamy. I don't know. At this point, you know what? I don't I, I think it might just be like Maybe it's the pool I'm dating from, you know. I'm just not seeing, like, the idea of wanting to, to have, like... I, you know what? Monogamy is seeming, like, more more work than, it's, than it should be, you know. Like, I honestly starting to feel like... I, I, I honestly do want a monogamous relationship where it's just, like, me and my lady, kind of like how I see my grandparents, you know. That would be ideal, but... As I as I keep going on into my dating field, you know, like I'm just seeing, it'll probably be a lot easier to, to be in a poly relationship where it's just like, you know what, what you do is what you do, what I do is what I do, you know, like, and we can just keep it open and honest. That way, there is no reason to be secretive. There is no reason to be uh, withholding of anything. Like, like we can we can just keep it what it is. Like, cause like. We already defined. Look, this relationship is open. We're gonna have multiple partners, and you know, I'm I'm wondering. Uh, I find myself asking this question: Like, does one person can one person even satisfy all my needs? You know, as a man, you know, like, well, will I honestly be satisfied by one woman? You know, and I honestly been sitting with myself thinking about my last my last two relationships. I'm just thinking about kind of like how things unfold, unfold unfolded in them and I'm just like why wow. and I'm thinking about like the two girls in the self and I'm just like I'm thinking about the similarities and their differences and I'm just like and in their differences I found out I needed what both of them offered but you know like it's two different sources like I couldn't get that from one person and it's just like is there even a person that can offer all of that or is that really what I should be doing you know like taking my hands in different pots you know each person provide different things for me, you know, like, because, like, just because you're in a poly relationship, it doesn't mean you have to be, you know, physical with the mate, you know, like, and I couldn't just be there for just, like, a mental connection with some of them, you know, and have the physical connection with others, you know, but I'm just thinking, like, it's just, it's just out there, like. I dig it. I, was, I'm, I mean, yeah. Oh, no, no, I want to jump into these comments. The comments is clicking right now, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my shit is, like, empty. Like, all I got is the title up here, like. <laughs> oh, great. I got this, you know what I'm saying? That's why we a team, you know what I mean? Pretty Rue and Orisha Goddess said, no, it's not dead, and it's not dead, though, in relation to monogamy being a dying, practicing relationship style or practice or ideology or conviction, you know what I mean? Pretty Rue said, the secret is everyone has red flags and everyone is a different person for different people. Most people slash ladies aren't secure enough for poly relationships. The right person will satisfy you. That empty hole isn't there. I want to add something else to that. And I, I agree with you on that too, Pretty Rue. But I do want to add something else there. You know what I mean? Uh, once again, in line with the groove of what Dash is saying and how we, the emphasis is not necessarily on sex. 
as far as poly relationships are concerned. Because whether you like it or not, Dash, we're in a poly relationship. Yeah, we are in, in a yeah, in a yeah, we are like <laughs> like like you, me, your your spouse. You know, like we are like this is a relationship. You know, <laughs> and, and, and speaking of that, like she she gave us a perfect clip which I use for the PVM um, stories in this topic that resonated with me a lot because like in that. It had me thinking more like with the poly situation, and that kind of got my wheels turning with that. Because like in that clip, the lady she was talking about how, all right, if a man is taking care of you and taking care of all your needs, but on the side he has another family that he's taking care of and taking care of that lady and all her needs, should it be an issue or should you just you know embrace it? And like as I was thinking about, it, I was just like. You know, if I if I expect that from my lady, honestly, she gonna you know want to have her fun. You know, so it's gonna obviously be another dude somewhere. I'm just thinking like, would that be something I could honestly you know see myself in or you know um, deal with? And I ain't gonna hold you, I can't. But like, as far as like me giving that out, like I was just like, yeah, I could see that. You know, like if you know. Even that is, even, I could, I can, and I can't, you know, I can, like, I can't see myself messing with multiple women, but, like, ideally do I want to, that's always the thing, like, I don't want to, you know, and that always plays in the back of my mind, like, do I really, really want this, like, yeah, I can, but do I want this, like, but, like, when she was saying that, like, if he's taking care of both houses, should it be an issue, I was just like, it shouldn't be, because, like, if you, if all your needs are being met by this person, but like you just aren't feeling all their needs. Like I guess you should have that freedom to, you know, have all your needs met, you know, like if it's just one other person and if it's really that serious, you know, like, but there's also like a conversation all parties involved got to be comfortable with, you know, like you can't just kind of pick that on me, you know, and I kind of was thinking about like, would I be cool with that? Like if my lady sprung that on me, like as a man, if I if my ego could even allow me to be like, yo, you need another man to please you, like I can only take care of half of that, like, you know, just like that's a that's a tall ax to ax, you know. But like, I don't know, I don't know. There's all types of women. There's all types of relationships. I need people to understand this. And the only reason I said what I said about us being in a poly relationship and all types of relationships really being poly to a degree is because at the end of the day. Once again, in reference to uh, Pretty Rude's comments, and I'm going to go back to the comment section, people. I forget about y'all. Uh, because, look, the other thing about poly relationships is you got to have your energy intact, for real. I know me. I'm selfish as fuck with my energy. Straight the fuck up. I don't <laughs> have time for me to invest energy in people places. And then you have to invest energy genuinely, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has to be genuine energy invested. Otherwise, you're just using people for what you want them for. You know what I'm saying? And me, personally, I know me. When I pour, I pour. That's it. Like, if I pour it to you, I call you my brother for a reason. Because when I pour, I pour. Otherwise, no, I'm saying. Everything hey. that I would talk to would be my brother if that was the case. You know what I mean? So if I, if I I say the same as far as a woman, if I call a woman my sister, it's because I pour in a certain type of way. It might not be the same way I will pour into my wife, into my girl or whatnot. Likewise, if I'm talking about my homie, I, I might not pour into my homie the same way I pour into my brother, but I still pour. So with that being said, I know with poly, with true, genuine poly, romantic poly relationships, you have to pour not only equally, but you have to pour caringly. You can't just pour into your cup and into the person that you fuck with's cup nice and cool, but when the other cups come through, you splashing and dash. <laughs> it don't work like that, you know what I mean? Because people gonna feel some type of way. I know me. I'm a splasher and dash. I don't give a fuck. Like, if I'm pouring into you, I want to pour into you. I want to put my focus into where I'm pouring. That's it. Straight the fuck up. If I have too many people that I'm serving, my brain gonna start clicking into logistic mode. My brain going to start clicking into business mode. It's going to start clicking into number mode. It's not going to start clicking into being selfless and being all-encompassing with my heart. Fuck no. 
It's 13 people out here waiting for a fucking drink and shit. What the fuck am I going to? All right, well, look. Whoo, whoo, whoo. That's me. I could be flawed. Fuck it. I'm a flawed human being. It is what it is. <laughs> It is what it is. I know myself enough to know what the fuck works for me and what the fuck doesn't. You know what I'm saying? But let me get back to these comments, though. So, oh, Paul. I mean, oh, Paul. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me so much. Opal by Opal. Pardon me so much. I'm saying. Uh -oh. Opal, what up? Like I fucking caught a stroke or something. Pardon me, Opal. Opal by Opal said communication is key. And the right person will give you a new perspective. That's a super fact. That's yeah. a super fact. And Pretty Rude also said no double standards. That's something I also wanted to touch on. There are relationships in which there are double standards. You know what I mean? Yeah, double standards are needed. That is also a style of relationship. What you have to ask yourself, and for anybody who's considering these things, what you have to ask yourself is what come with establishing and maintaining the double standard. Because if you want to be the man with several wives, that's a thing. If you want to be the woman with several husbands, that's the thing. However, your relationship is not going to look like the person that decided to share equally, and your relationship is not going to look like the two people who decided to pour into themselves, um, to pour into each other respectfully. Your relationship is going to look like, okay, you are the person that is going to have these branches that we are all connected to. You provide us with ah, 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 ah. Period. It's, it's like everything, every relationship is contractual. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say, every relationship got its levels, too. Type of weight. Yeah. Because every relationship kind of going to form and develop its own pattern of where it's going to be. Because, like, I, I do, I see, I'm, I'm, I feel like you do need double standards in a relationship, but it's not necessarily always beneficial for the guy. Like, like a lot of the double standards I'm talking about is more so beneficial for, like, the lady. And, like, I ain't even about to bring up all the examples. Like, when they pop up, they just pop up. Like, each relationship will tolerate what it does. But, like, when you find that person, I I have developed that pattern with that person where, you, like, certain things you're able to, like, let go or not hold or harp on as much as you would with the last person, you know, and make you look at them differently, you know, so. But, um... With that, I mean, I don't know, you know, like, we're going to say, because, like, this, where I'm dating from, like, I'm not even, like, seriously dating. It's just, like, where I'm just sampling from. It's just, like, ah, I'm not seeing any long-term potential in any of the, in any of the options I'm, I've been looking at, you know, and that could be what it is as well, but that's just where I'm at right now. I just don't really see, like, the... I don't see the benefit of getting married right now. Like, and I'm like trying hard to maintain that spirit, that desire, that want to, you know, cause like for so long, I always say, you know, I wanted to be like my grandparents and I wanted to have that, have that wife, you know, have that black picket fence, dog, kids, all the shebang, you know, but as I get older and older, it's just like, do I really want marriage or do I really just want someone that's down for me, you know, someone I can spend my time with? Do I really want the the task of getting married? Because honestly, when I think about marriage, the business of marriage scares me off more than the prospect of being married does at this point, you know, and that's really my biggest holdup. It's just like the, the business of it. And it's just like, well, if this doesn't work out, like, or I can lose, you know. And it's not even just me, because, like, like, I don't want to take from her either, but it's just, like, all that can be taken away from a person just because we decided to form a union, you know. Yeah. Like, where it should be, I would ideally like it to be, like, it, like if we walk, whatever we walked up in this drone, we're walking out with. And, you know, share aspects that we develop throughout the pace. We can, we should be able to find the love between us to divide that up, you know, without having lawyers in because it's just like I start thinking about the logistics of all that I'm just like I'm bringing lawyers in to divorce you that's more money on top of more money to give you you know for somebody that I once thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with like do I really want all that well then you got to ask yourself this question I'm going to ask you this question here and this question also stands for everybody up in the chat how selfless are you willing to be um honest I mean, because I could put myself out there before before I give you the uh, the question, 
I put myself out there. Um, there's a line that Big Boy said, and I really live by it because I have the spirit of a hustler. Um, and Big Boy was talking about, um, I don't know if he actually went through with it, but I heard it and it made me go, yeah, I fuck with that. And he basically said that he married his wife without a prenup because even if his wife decided to take half, he's still good. He's still rich. And that's the type of mindset I got. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not tripping if, let's say, let's say the lady I'm with right now, we get married, no prenup, we go off, she helps me get money, I help her get money, we build a billion-dollar estate, we split. This is all God forbid, of course. It's a hypothetical. We split, she won $500 million, right? Fuck. I'm no longer a billionaire. But I have 500 fucking million dollars. Nigga, you know what's in my account now? I ain't even got five bands up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I got 500 million. Like, why am I being so selfish? But that's just me, though. I know how selfless, I know how selfless I'm willing to go in order for me to not make my marriage as political as it can be. So with that being said, once again, like, how selfless are you willing to go See, it depends Not being on, like, it, it kind of depends because, like, in that instance, I'm with you. Like, if she with me at the beginning of things, look, if we break up, whatever you want, you can get because, like, you was there. Like, you were, you were there believing when this was all just a dream. But, like, it's different if I'm already established and then you walk, you walking into my life, like, and like all this was around when you enter my life, that I don't feel that same energy because it's just like, like no, you didn't help me establish this. Like while yeah, you may have made life a little bit more enjoyable, like during your time here, and like maybe help elevate a few things. But this was already in motion before you already got here. Like this was already established. Like whether you arrived or not, this was going to continue. You know, you just happened to be here. Like. So in that instance, no, I don't feel like you are entitled to that. Like, unless you put in, like, some, unless you put in, like, 10 plus years, and then even then, like, a stipulation, like, like, a certain amount, like, and maybe, like, y'all can work to, a, like, a common, a common number, like, that y'all both feel comfortable with, you know, that feels equal and shared to both parties, but, um, to just, extent of not getting a prenup most people that get prenups with the prenup but before it even expired and then like even the prenup is is um you got to renew that every 10 years so like with that you know do i really want to go through that like and do i want to add that stress because like it's easy to say get a prenup until you bring that conversation up in your relationship because i'm gonna tell you one thing I brought that up in my last relationship, you know, and that was a hot argument for us for a good month and a half. Because, like, even with the best of intentions, it's always just like, well, that is always that initial, what you don't trust me, you know, that's why you need to prenup, or you think I'm gonna, I'm, you think I'm gonna rob you. And it's just like, no, it's just like, I wanna protect myself. But in saying that you wanna protect yourself, you're almost telling your partner, I don't trust that you got the best of intentions for me, you know. It is. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but it's not that though. Like the the notion of the prenup is to protect both parties. Like, like you you both are being protected by this thing. Like, it's 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 really just a you know just in case shit go bad. You know, like we know as human beings, people are emotional. As a lot of times when people are breaking up and if you've been engaged or you've been married, like sometimes you could be that chill partner to be like, you know what, let's just let love be. And you can have a spouse that's just on some, I just want to make your life miserable because we're breaking up, you know. And it's not even about the money. It's not even about the assets. It's about just making you frustrated and agitated and trying to hurt you. And in that process, just trying to drag out whatever it's going to drag out, you know. You know what? Pretty Rude says something in the comments, and I'm going to get to all the rest of the comments. I see you, that African butterfly. I promise that I'm going to get to the rest of these comments. But Pretty Rude says something I want to get into that, that is, like, flowing within the groove of the conversation right now. Pretty Rude said, are you rich? Because if you aren't and you brought up a prenup, I'd leave. Look, keep things all the way funky. 
this, this is where I come from, and this is not a stab at you, Dash, at all, but this is where I come from as far as when I say that there's a fine line between intuition and other um, machinations of the mental facilities. If we talking like, I'm going to put myself on a chopping board. If I'm moving my family to Compton, if I'm moving my family to Slauson, if I'm moving my family to Southside Chicago, and I decide to get a chopper, it makes sense, right? <laughs> if I'm moving my family to Whitesville, San Diego, if I'm moving my family to upstate New York, <laughs> if I'm moving my family to, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Super Safe Bill, Florida, and I decide to get a chopper, does that still make sense? I mean, yeah, it do, for protection, like, from what? Uh, from you never know from what. Like that's the thing. That's like, the thing right there, and that's where niggas fuck up, us included. This is why women get away with the stigma and sometimes the truth that men don't be knowing because we don't lean on our intuition. We we too busy thinking about other things that don't have anything to do with the circumstance of the now or a circumstance that is relevant to where we're going. Unless I have a uh, unless I have a plan to move in a sense, look, I put it like this: 30, 34 years of my life, I never needed a gun once. I didn't mm -hmm. shot guns before, and I didn't I didn't stash guns for homies before. Thirty four years of my life, I never needed a gun once. If I decide that at some point in time I need a gun, me personally, something's wrong. I'm moving differently. I'm gonna keep things real. I still want to get a gun. Just because I know how I am as far as protecting my loved ones. But if I feel I need a gun after 34 years of being protected by divine intervention, there's something wrong with the way that I'm moving if I feel like I need a gun after all this time. You know what I'm saying? I only say that to say it's no different when it comes to relationships. If you feel like you need to protect yourself against, or if you feel like you need to establish a protection between two parties that's supposed to be like this, in a relationship, but y'all been rocking like this without this said protection? That's just me. That's just See, me. I look at it differently because I'm just like, yeah, you can look at it that way, but also like we're doing something different. Like marriage isn't the relationship. Like we're we're pitting something extra onto ourselves outside of just the relationship. Like we are pitting on the bird and and the responsibility of like shouldering each other. And in my section, I want to go back to Pretty Rude real quick. Uh, the answer her drawing. No, I'm not rich. But like she was more well off than me. And and my accent for the prenup was more me protecting her. Like, because like we're in a space like where we're still developing. And I'm mindful of that. And I know our finances are going to PBM to our individual projects, to this, that, and the third. And my thing is, I don't want whatever I have to affect you. So, like, let's say I I invest badly on my and, and shit hit the fan and my shit is fucked up, I don't want that to fall back on you, you know? And I don't want that same responsibility from somebody else. Like, yeah, if we're together, I'm going to take care of you, but I also don't want your bad mistake to fuck me up where I can't take care of us. Mm. If that makes sense. It does. It does. I'm going to jump back into the comments section, though, because I don't want to leave so many of these comments. Oh, yeah. Hit the comments. I ain't know we still had them. Oh, of course, of course. I'm going to see if I can get to as many as I can that's within the relevance of the groove of the conversation right now. So Pretty, Pretty Rude said, do not do it unless you meet a person you know you want forever. You will know without a doubt. I believe that's more reference towards the marriage than it is towards the prenup, but it still connects to the prenup as well. Yeah. Pretty Rude and that African butterfly said, get that prenup. And that African butterfly said, it's easy to say that while you're in love or just good in general. The tune changes when people are going through divorce. People get mean yeah. and petty because feelings are hurt. Look, that's true. That's true. But then and, and people change. Like, like look. And don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking from a place as if I'm I'm like I'm exempted from feeling like a human because shit, I'll be hurt if my woman left me. I'll be hurt. 
I would be fucking devastated. You know what I'm saying? I might be in the motherfucking bed for weeks on end with ice cream and whatever fucking side story <laughs> motherfucking Netflix film that you could think of or eat or TVs. <laughs> that motherfucking nigga. I'm talking about sex. Boxes of Kleenex next to me, and it's going to be for two types of bodily fluid, and it's going to be from both heads, nigga. I'm talking about real shit. You know what I mean? I'm going to be going the fuck through it. But you know what? God is good. I'm going to be... I'm not going to say I'm going to be good, even though I will be, but I know my life is more than just the fucking parameters of that relationship, man. I have a purpose beyond that. She has a purpose beyond me. We building to build to a greater picture, yes. But we also have a responsibility towards our purpose, yo. Motherfuckers get lost in their relationships. Let's talk about it. Motherfuckers really, really yeah. But they lose their, they lose their identities. That's why you gotta remain self. Like, like when I see a couple hanging out with themselves too much, I that's that's my initial thought. Like. Are they spending time with the individual parties? Like, are they still remaining? Getting some time to remain individuals. Like, can that do keep the relationship going? Like, you doing your own thing and they doing their own thing and then y'all y'all bring it back because, like, too much time together can, you know, get to the point where you just start butting heads and it's just too much friction between y'all and y'all start nitpicking. And, like, like, shit. Like I used to love it back in the day, but I don't want to be up under my my spouse all the time, like twenty four seven. Like it's cool, you know, here and there, you know, like on occasion. But like I don't want it every day. Like I want like my spouse to be getting it, and I want to be in the process of getting my shit. And then like when we have time at the end of the day or something, then we link up. But I don't need it twenty four seven throughout the day. Like what are we doing? Like give me some chance. Shit, huh. I said, nigga, nobody needs that shit 24-7. You know what that is, 24-7? That's a fucking waitress. That's a waiter. <laughs> no, keep things all the way real. Keep things all the way real. What is a waiter? A waiter is a person that literally waits on what you want, that waits on your desires while you go get shit done. Your waiter isn't over your shoulder while you're working. Your waiter isn't in the bedroom while you're fucking. Your waiter isn't fucking looking at you while you're sleeping to make sure that you're good. No, your waiter is there upon call for those fucking desires. That so like nobody wants a waiter as a relationship fucking spouse. Like I don't want a waiter. It's beautiful for somebody to to serve me in the way that I choose to be served. Yes, I'm gonna keep it all the way funky. It's beautiful. It feels great. It feels gratifying, especially to reciprocate it. But once again, the individuality. What I've been going for before I met you, you're supposed to be fueling that. And I'm yeah. supposed to be fueling that to you for what you've been going for before you even met me. How the fuck did I attract myself to you? How the fuck did I find you attractive if it wasn't for your individuality in the first place? That's perfect. We're going to get back to these comments, though. That African butterfly said, I'd rather have that selflessness in writing while we're good instead of hoping later. I was Yeah, that's real. And that's and that's that's another reason for the prenup, because it's just like it's it's easier to have those conversations and it and to figure out what's what's gonna be for who when you're in a good space. Like when 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 I know you hate me, I already know you're not even coming in with love. You're not you're not you're not trying to see me win, like, and that's understandable because you you're working from a place of anger and rage, you know. But once that's society and we good again, you know, like how are we gonna fix this? Like, yeah. if the damage is already done, or I'm feeling some type of way, or holding on to this anger because I feel like you you know maybe you strong on me in the courtroom, you know, or. You know, or maybe you felt like I did that, so now you holding residual anger, and it's just like, you know, like how how do we how do we grow our relationship from there? Like, cause like just because the romantic side of things, and it don't mean necessarily mean like our relationship is done. We could be just good as friends, like. That's a fact. And if we parents, then we still gotta we still gotta we still gotta see each other. We still got a kid to raise, like so, <laughs> like like. like we, yep. 
we 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 breaking up, but we're not going nowhere. Like, so I still gotta make things right with you. And if you hate me because I I robbed you in the courtroom, like, how are we gonna make that work? Like, that's real. Niggas is childish, B. I'm gonna keep it 100 funky with you. And I want to yeah. address this comment by that African butterfly. She said, "Okay, Jay, she left you, but it's for another man, and now she wants more than half of your stuff you made together, and." She want alimony. You still good? You want to know? No. I got to be good. No, you don't got to be good, Jenny. I'll tell you why I got to be good. I'm saying for me, I got to be good. Well, actually, you don't. Because once you start dating a new relationship, you don't got to pay alimony. At least I think that's in California. That, that goes with marriage. Once a person marries, then they don't have to pay alimony. If they can date all the fuck they want. No. If they living together with the spouse... That, oh. That yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Or, or if they spend it too many nights at said spouse house, or a spouse is spend too many nights. At, but you gotta keep records of that, so you gotta gotta be on your Snoopy shit. Like, I, I ain't got time for that. I don't. I don't. No, like, I got the time. I, like, I got the time if you taking my money. Oh, that's if, the thing. I look, look, look. I know where I started from, and I know where I'm going. The end destination for me is not going to be what the divorce may be god forbid once again hypothetical that's not the end destination if that's the end destination yes i'm going to stretch that motherfucker as much as i can but that ain't the end destination i done been i done been no fool real time i done been taking care of sick of a sick mom having my having a whole different type of life stripped from me real time that I decided to strip from myself real time. I know what sacrifice is. I know what sacrifice is. So if I'm going to walk into that type of relationship, that magnitude of a relationship, knowing what could be, once again, I got to be good. That's just me. Because let's put things all the way funky. Once again, this is something we talked about. You don't know what nobody doing 24-7, period. You don't know what nobody doing 24-7. That's true. You put your faith and you put your hope in the fact that your hearts are connected enough to know that that person isn't out there doing X, Y, Z. Yeah. But you don't know. You don't know. Even you if don't. the voice that's telling you something. Intuition is a voice that's telling you to trust a part of you that is blind to the physicality of evidence. That's what intuition is. When people say have faith, that's your, that, they're telling you to use your intuition, train your intuition, discipline your intuition, because faith is being able to see without seeing. That means that you're looking for something way more substantial than the physical counterpart of things. I got to be good. What I'm going to be mad at because she decided to take anything? All right. I bet she can't take anything. I'm too blessed. You're going to take a lot of shit from me. I guarantee shit going to click for me. Once again, I'm a hustler. I came from the cloth. My mom was born in a village in Africa, barely noticeable in a fucking map in Zorzo, Liberia. She passed away in Northeast Philadelphia. She was born in a village where they had to put rocks in pans to tell how old you were per year. She passed away in a hospital in Northeast Philadelphia. Wrap your head around this. I'm cut from a different cloth. I gotta be good. That's what I'm saying. No, I feel that. And I feel everything you come in from. And like, that's, that's completely understandable. But no, like, I'm not good, and you're not eating off my tab. Like, I hear what you're saying. That sound edible, you know, but, like, at the same time, look, there is no faith or trust I got to put into you because we've already ended this relationship romantically. Now, the only faith I feel like I need to put into you is that you won't screw me over. So if we have an order and I'm paying you money, alimony you know like i expect you to hold up your end of the bargain like and if you do start dating look i'm not i'm not saying you can't enjoy life like do you live life to the fullest just not on my dime 
Like, that's just not how you're going to live life. Because at the end of the day, yeah, while I may be a hustler, I'm a hustler. That's, that's how I got this bread. I'm not about to hustle myself out of cash and continue paying for something I don't have to. She isn't financing my life in any way. Me financing her life isn't going to bless my life in any way. All that is is just taking money out of my pockets that could be going to other folks. That same money could be going to our kids, to my business, to me starting my next hustle. Like, But she's a mom, bro. It's going to your kids either way. <laughs> it might not all be going to your kids, but she's a mom. If she's yeah, a that's what the child support is, is, is going to be there. And like, honestly, like if, if we're talking about me, I'm going to be too active in my kid life that the mom going to even be, can't even play that. Because more than likely, the kid's living with me. Like, that's just how I am. Like, I'm, I'm more of a, even if me and my, even if me and my baby mom weren't on the best of terms, I would be more so, I want you to live with me because I'd rather the kids every night, two parents. And we can have our own rooms and we can, you know, we can both, you know, do our own thing, you know, and just, but when we home, it's the family. When we out on the street, we do our own thing. I can deal with that. Like, and that's honestly how I would honestly like try to push for things if I was with someone and we had a kid and things started to fall apart. Because I do see the importance of the kid growing up and being able to be like, oh, my mom and my dad up in the same house. Like I can, I can reach out and get everything I need as opposed to living with that one parent and kind of feeling like I'm missing something, you know. That African butterfly, uh, blah, blah, blah. We can rewind that jump. That African butterfly said, of course you're good. You got God's grace. That doesn't mean you should turn down the ark when Noah asks if you want to ride. It's okay to protect yourself. I agree. I'm not saying yeah. protect myself. What I'm saying is I'm not going to the lengths. You know what I mean? Like, like, for example, for me to be able to prove that somebody... For me to be able to go to lengths outside of my own peace in order to establish when alimony should stop, like I've been, I, I, <laughs> I, I've seen alimony. I was receiving alimony from what you call it from her, from her husband for some mm -hmm. years and whatnot. I know what it is when when a motherfucker don't pay. That shit is so fucking stressful. You got to go all the way to City Hall. You got to make sure that the motherfucking maid is there. They have to go through all the records. And then it's like, it, look, it takes, it takes, it literally takes from your day and other shit that you could be doing. Just for you to be able to establish the domain to be able to get shit rectified. And then the best, the worst that you could do, let's put things all the way funky. Because they, they, they broke game to me. It was like the worst do is freeze assets the next time that they don't pay. You know what that means? That means that you're still not going to get paid. Yeah. You're you still just hurt yourself. So I'm doing hurt. all this shit just to fuck you over, and that's spiteful. I'm doing all this shit just to fuck you over, and I still don't get my bread. What the fuck? For all that, I might as well just keep hustling and keep doing my shit. Like, I don't have... Look, I'm going to protect myself within reason for myself. Let me put it that way. I'll protect myself within reason. I'm not going to go into a dog fight without a dog. You know what I mean? God forbid we talking about this situation once again. And she come with a lawyer, I'm going to come with a lawyer too. Mm -hmm. You dig know what I'm saying? But once again, like, I ain't, I ain't coming with the street sweeper if you come up with a knife. Like, let's talk about this. The fuck I'm going to bring a street sweeper for? We don't even need to go to war. Yeah, I got mine. You got yours. But let's talk about it. Let's be civil about this. That's just the type of person I am. I don't got time for me to stretch to go beyond my peace just to establish some crumbs, man. Crumbs? It depends on how, how special them crumbs is, like, at the same time, too. Like, but, I mean, like, like you don't necessarily, like, really, like, that's, like, it really depends on how, how much you are invested today also, like. Because, like, like you said, you can just be like, you know what, it is what it is, like. I just gonna trust like shit just gonna work out my way and you know like if it does it does if it doesn't it doesn't you know or like you could always you know like have a private investigator or you can be Mr. Snoopy like yo or you can just you know just be mindful like like you've been with this woman for a while so you like like as a man you do notice when a woman you've been with is dating somebody you know like and for me, I think I would kind of go about that practice. Like, I would just kind of pick up on her behavior. Like, and be like, okay, 
I know she I know she messed with somebody because you can kind of tell and the energy kind of changes a little bit too like when they start to get serious with somebody as opposed to it's just like something like a like a fling or something going on like you can feel like the energy change and things get a little different when she gets serious with a mate and like even like the questioning comes you know because like depending on who that guy is and how secure he feeling in this new relationship and how secure he feel with my standing as being your baby father or whatever you know like now he may come with an agenda of oh like you gotta you gotta check young boy or whatever the case may be and now i gotta reciprocate that energy some to an extent you know i dig it that's real you know what i mean because once again we it's all the way funky we humans you know what yeah. I, mean? I we all susceptible to emotional response and shit you know what i'm saying and even with me saying this feel some type of way like I still right. type of way. I'd be like, damn, like real. I'd be mad. yeah, like, and I think that's natural. Like I, I think like you gotta have that, that for real. Like I think that's what hurts the most is just like because, like we all know anybody's capable of anything, but it's just like you feel like yo the bond that we created, you wouldn't do that to me, you know, based off that bond, you know, and you like to believe like even in the worst of times, like, people could still, you know, trust in the love that you built once with a person, you know, whether y'all hard times or not, but at the same time, when people are emotional and they are feeling a certain type of way, people people step out of character sometimes, too, like, and people will do something resentful and spiteful that's completely out of norm just out of the simple fact that they was hurting that moment. Doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, like, that's who they are as a person, but, you know, like, that moment brought it out of them or that emotion brought it out of them. That's real. I dig that. Now, we rounding off on the hour mark right now. Actually, we're rounding off on the 62nd minute mark to be exact. So I want to thank everybody for being up in here, for contributing to the conversation, for your transparency, for your insight. Thank you so much for being open with us. Dash, you already know what it is. I love you. I thank you for yours. But you know what tradition stands for and what tradition calls for. Was one I know. Even on the table right now, as far as this conversation is concerned, before we up out of here. Well, uh, first, let me shout out everybody that was in Brooklyn yesterday. You know, we send our prayers and our wishes to y'all. Uh, anybody that may have been affected by the subway station. Got a lot of loved ones out in New York. Got a lot of loved ones out in Brooklyn. Been able to talk to a few of them, not all of them. Uh, so to those that haven't been able to contact, I hope y'all doing good. You talk to me as soon as possible or if i see y'all on the gram or whatever you know i'm definitely gonna reach out but uh for t for my lasting words it's just gonna be trust the process you know and allow faith to allow faith to guide your path you know um sometimes we get we get well a lot of times and i'm speaking for myself here we get so caught up in what's next What's, what's my purpose? What should I be doing? You know, like, or this this is how I should go. And instead of kind of just letting things flow and letting things be and kind of just letting, letting my destiny decide for me where I'm going to go, I'm, I'm trying to push. I'm trying to make things happen instead of just allowing things to happen. And as people, we kind of just got to step back and just allow things to happen. Like, with life, with relationships, with everything. Uh, sometimes the best course of action is just stepping back and just allowing the situation to have air and letting it be, you know. Because yeah. in, ref in reference to relationships, you know, like the old saying goes, if it's yours, set it free, and they'll come back. If, it's, if it doesn't, then, you know, it was never yours to begin with, you know. And you save yourself the heartache and end of trying to hold on to something. How about you? What's your last words? That's for my niggas. I got something for my niggas today. Lean into your intuition more, man. Lean into your intuition more. I know this shit's scary. When you open yourself up for for love, when you open yourself up for, for genuine connection, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, at the end of the day, man, ain't no space for fear and love. You jump. <laughs> you, you just jump, bro. You jump. Lean into your intuition, my nigga. You can't get played. The great Prince said it once before, and I live by this shit. Prince said, I can never be played. 
That's a serious statement. Because for people who will try to play you, they end up playing themselves. Once you move from a place of pure love, once you move from a frequency of straight love, even if somebody plays you, they end up playing themselves. And it don't affect you because you gave your all. You gave the best of you. And you're going to continue to give. You're just going to keep it pushing along your way. I can never be played. Oh, that's real shit. That's real shit. I like that. Like, like that's real. That's real. I can. I can definitely. I can definitely about. I can definitely agree with that wholeheartedly. Like it. And that's real. Like, but you know, live by it. Live by it. Yeah, embrace it. Like I said, the last episode. You know, like show show stuff by you on yourself. You know, like hold your own standards. You know, be selfish with your time and your energy. Like. Everybody isn't supposed to have access to you, and that's okay. You know, like, sometimes even the people you want to have access to you are the people that aren't supposed to have access to you. So, like, you just kind of got to make peace with that and just, like, let them go upon, it, go, upon, go upon their road and travel upon yours, you know. Like, just trust, just trust in the universe. Like, that's why I'm just letting back, you know. Like, if it come back to me, it's mine. If it don't, all right. Uh, our memories is our memories, you know, the good times was the good times, the bad times was the bad times, you know. The lessons was learned, and I move on, you know. It don't, because it don't really got to be animosity, like, and I don't really think I have any beef with anybody, even people that I'm off with. Like, I don't think it's really beef, but it's just, you know, like, you got your path to walk, I got my path to walk, and we can find peace in that, like. That's right. Man. Oh, shout out to T-Shirt Mercenary, you know, official sponsor for uh, PBM. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Search Positive Vibes, maybe, on YouTube. Um, any else thing? Any, 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 anything else coming up? Oh, we got a guest Sunday, so definitely tune in Sunday. Uh, and we're going to chop up with that. And... Oh, you know what? I think that might be all I have to share, you know. Like, <laughs> like everybody just stay blessed up, stay prayed up, stay loved up, you know. Enjoy the vibes. And um, honestly, oh, you know what? I do have something I, I want to share. Um, to, this month is National Poet, Poet, uh, Poetry Month as well. So, uh, to everyone, I would like y'all to send your favorite poets to us, to the DM, so we can post them, give them their flowers. And if you have a clip of their performance or a piece of their artwork, definitely send that as well. And you know what? I think, like, we'll probably share a poem with you guys the last Sunday of this month, too, you know, to put a final ball on Poetry Month as well, you know? Yeah. Last Sunday, nigga, every Sunday, bro. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, well, there's only two Sundays left, you know, like, that's why I was, <laughs> like, I was late to the party of finding out that I was actually Poet Month, and I felt a little embarrassed, and I was just like, ah, you know what, can't, can't catch them all, like, but. but let's do it like this, because we have a guest this Sunday, so let's do it like this. From here on out, we're going to dedicate the Wednesdays to the poets. So okay. every Wednesday from here on out, Dash and myself, we're going to have a poem ready and waiting, at least one poem each ready and waiting, in which we will have incorporated into each episode of PVM this month. So Wednesdays is going to be for the poets. It's going to be for the Poetry Society. Yeah, you know, because, you know, every poet just want to be loved. <laughs> Yo, man, we love you this we see you this Sunday at 7 p.m. with our special guest. Y'all tune <laughs> up and see what's going to be what. We love you. Right. Yo. Stay blessed. Ladies.